Okay, the second activity, the second uh, document, this will be a little more hands-on. Usually we're more hands-on than just lecture. This second document that I'll give you is uh, where we can get, uh, where we can link up our websites directly to the search engines. We're going to create a couple of free accounts at the two big search engines that we talk about in this class, Bing and Google. We're going to create accounts there. Uh, then we're going to link our accounts to our website so that we can track all of the data that Google and Bing see. What were the keywords people used to find your site? Where did the traffic come from? How effective was it to use Twitter? How much time did people spend on my site? Etc. So that's one of the reasons why we're going to set this up so that then we can understand our data, that is, so we can see our data, understand it, and then use it. So as I said last week, you, you should come with your login information. And usually what I do in this class is um, I, I show this, and then we usually do a little quick one-on-one -on -one to make sure we set it up with everyone, because everyone's going to vary. If everyone had a WordPress website, I can show everyone exactly the same way to do it. But people come in with different kinds of websites, so I build in some time to help people individually. If you don't have your password today, no problem. Just still follow along, take notes watch the video when you can and you'll be able to apply this but I'm gonna put a new document into the network folder so I'm gonna go back to the network folder I just put a new document in there it's Campos SEO 2 Webmaster Tools. Copy that over to your desktop also, or flash drive. So drag that to your desktop. The printer I will turn on a little later, but drag that over. If you've got a USB drive, you can copy that. So copy it over and then we'll talk about it. And we'll work with it because, again, usually the class is more hands-on than just lecture. So copy that over. drag and drop and then once you've dragged it over you can close the network window and you can open the PDF the sheet number two Okay, so this sheet number two uh, has two pages. We're actually, actually going to start on page two. Let's jump to page two. This page two here is pretty dense uh, with these bullet points. We've got conversion goals. You might have heard of the term conversions. That's uh, marketing jargon. You must decide the goals of your company early on. In my fictional business, Victor's Bakery, I want people to buy my cupcakes. That's a goal. That's a conversion goal. In order to get to that goal, I have many conversion goals before that point. If I did the previous exercise and I figured out what my goal is, I have various steps to get to that goal. My goal is I've got this fictional bakery and I'm trying to sell cupcakes, let's say. That's the ultimate goal. It's called conversions because there's a potential client that has not bought the cupcake yet. Once they've bought the cupcake, they've been converted. It's a conversion. So in other words, goals. I accomplished my goal of someone buying my cupcake. I got a conversion. Sometimes conversions are tied monetarily to some activity. If someone buys that cupcake, my conversion was that I made money. I got my return on investment. But here I have some examples, some bullet points of possible things I can do to reach my ultimate conversion goal, which is to sell the cupcakes. Before that, I could, for example, focus a bit on getting Twitter followers. So followers on Twitter, one of the social networks. The purpose of that could be that as I get more followers on Twitter, I have this audience 
that has chosen to pay attention to me. In contrast to that coupon that everyone gets in the mail and many of us throw away, here, in theory, many people chose to follow me on Twitter because they want to see these things. They want to get the latest news or coupons or cool photo or funny video or whatever. Whatever it is I'm doing on Twitter in support of my business. I want to get followers so that when I tweet about a coupon, about a sale, about a new product, some amount of that audience on Twitter follows through, gets converted. So let's say I've got 1,066 followers on Twitter. If you go by the metric of 1%, 1% of your followers will be the most interested, the most rabid, the most hardcore that really will buy your product, really will use that coupon, really will subscribe to your newsletter. 1,066, 1% of that, 10 and a half followers, rounding up 11. 11 followers out of 1,066 would be the most willing to take out their credit card and buy your product. Now that's a very conservative number, obviously, 1%. You might have an amazing audience that really cares about your product, and it might be 20%. 1,066, 20% of that, 213 people. Is that enough to make a living off of 213 customers? Maybe. Let's say I've got 1,066 followers on Twitter, and I'm amazing on social media, and 75% of them are really rabid followers. Okay, 800 real dedicated buyers. Okay, I've got at the moment 13 followers on Twitter. What's 1% of 13? Less than 1. Rounding up, 1 follower might be uh, really rabid enough to buy my products. So that's why we're trying to get more followers on social media. The more followers we have, more of them could be serious. If we go by that very conservative estimate of 1%, you have then a high bar to reach. Because it's very easy to follow on Twitter, very easy to follow on Instagram, Facebook, etc. It's much harder to get them to then take out their wallet and buy something. So the more followers you have, the more possibility of getting real conversions. Is there a way that a law in a um, statistic that can be made? Is there any law for people who will actually clean up their pockets there, like 1% or something like that? Um, it depends on the network. It depends on your company. It depends on your product. I'm, sh I'm showing their worst case scenario. Okay. Your particular product or company and such might be much better than that, and 50% of your followers really are willing to buy. So great, even if I've got 20 followers, that's only 10 people, 10 sales. If I've got 100 followers, 50% of that is 50 people. So I can't tell that for every company, but if we go by the worst case scenario, 1%, that's a high bar to reach. But as the more you do this and the more you get your data, like from Google Analytics, as we'll see, the more we can figure out what our, what our particular numbers are. So another conversion that I could be going for is to get social interactions on Facebook. And those interactions, every network has these to some degree. Likes, shares, comments. I can like on Twitter, I can share on Twitter, like Facebook, I can like and share on Peach, I can like and share on YouTube, I can comment on YouTube. All the networks have a variation of this, these social interactions. I want to get those from Facebook, let's say. I want to focus on Facebook. The point of this is I post something on Facebook, a coupon, a cool picture, a thought of the day, whatever. I post something on Facebook, oftentimes thinking about it in terms of how I can get more traffic or sales. I post something, and I have 100 likes. That is, let's say, 100 followers. And um, one of those followers shares my post on Facebook to their friends and family. And they've got a thousand friends and family. So I originally reached possibly 100. But now that one person that had a thousand actually helped me reach perhaps 1,100. My followers plus their followers, potentially. So I want to get as many shares and likes and comments, in this case out of Facebook or any network. Because that 
could help grow or spread my message via shares. A like could be a like or a comment could show that someone is interested. It could be a lead. Someone is interested in my product. I posted about this brand new product. Someone liked it. I can see in my on my site on my Facebook who liked my things. That could be a lead for me to further try to pursue that particular person that liked. So maybe pursue them a bit more to go to go through the 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 funnel of of lead to conversion. If a person comments on Facebook, that's a little bit more of an indicator, perhaps, that that person really is interested in my content, in my product, because a like can be very disposable. You see stuff on Facebook, you like it, you click like, you move on, what's next? You click another like, you move on, what's next? But if someone took the time to stop and write something, hopefully something better than cool, you know, something a little bit more detailed like, great post, I really like it, can't wait to see more. If they're more engaged when they comment, that could give you more of an indication that that particular user on Facebook could be more ripe for you to pursue them more to buy your product. Maybe contact them directly. I saw you liked my comment on Facebook. I saw you commented on my post on Facebook. Here's a coupon. Try it out. That might lead to a conversion. So I want to be active on social media more often so I can get more of these types of interactions. I want to get site visits via Google+. I want traffic to my website from Google+. In this case, Google+, is mentioned because Google+, is Google's social network. Google is a very big company. It has Google+, it has YouTube, it has Gmail, Google Maps, Android phones, self-driving cars. Google has a lot of products, a lot of audience, a lot of reach. If I get a free Google Plus business page, when someone searches for local taco shops, and I'm a taco shop locally, my taco shop could appear featured on a Google search because I've got a Google Plus page, whereas my competition doesn't, and their, their link looks like a plain old link, whereas my link has a picture of my business and a map because I created a Google Plus page. So if I take the time to create the free Google page that could result in more views on a Google search, more visits to my Google Plus or home page, my website. So this one ties into this, the next one because from Twitter or Facebook or Google Plus, I'm trying to get more traffic, more hits back to my website, to my home page. I'm trying to bring them back to my website. Because on most of these social networks, you cannot accomplish your ultimate goal. Sell a cupcake. You cannot accomplish the ultimate goal directly on the networks at the moment. The big companies can. You can buy stuff directly from um, Amazon via tweet. Amazon tweets about a product. You reply to the tweet. You bought the product. Uh, if you set up your credit card and such. But we're not Amazon level yet. We can't do that yet. On Pinterest, you can do something like that as well. Macy's pins a picture of something, that very sporty coat. You like it, there's going to be a button directly on that pin on Pinterest. Buy it now. I can't do that yet. I'm not Macy's big. At the moment, the only way to really accomplish the ultimate goal of selling is to get them back to your website or your Etsy shop, or your eBay shop, whatever, your Craigslist listing, whatever. You can't accomplish this, usually the goal of selling something, or having people subscribe to your <coughs> newsletter, or read your 500-word blog post on the social media. It's a conduit to go back to your website to do that. If you look at how brands and companies manage their social media, usually there's going to be a picture to entice you, a little sentence, and a link back to the full article and such or product on their website. That's why I still want to get traffic back to my website. That's where I have the full control. Part of effective modern SEO is also to engage in blogging to write a blog. I teach a class in blogging. 
I'm not quite sure when the next one is coming up, probably in a month or maybe two, probably at the most. But look out for my blogging class at this college, and uh, well, we can get into more detail. But the short answer is blogging is effective for SEO because you are creating content on a regular basis. When we did the activity last week of searching for my company on, on Bing, it showed here's PMD Interactive's homepage, their Twitter, their blog, their Yelp. Bing saw a lot of my content online, articles and such. So the more content I put out online, the more the search engines, Google, Bing, Yahoo, whatever, could find my content and rank me higher than the competition. The search engines like it when your site is active. If you and your competitor created a site at the same time a year ago, but your competitor is posting a brand new blog post once a month, and you're not, who do you think Google is going to favor to show results higher? Your competition. Because your competition is active and updating, and Google wants new updated content to show as results. Yes? If you are not active and you have Facebook connected and you have Twitter connected, etc., but you just let it sit there, maybe every three months you update it, does it even do any good to have the Facebook, the Twitter, and so forth? Yeah, it does some good. It does much more good if you're more active, but you know, once in a while it's still better than nothing. There's many websites out there, many businesses out there that created something and got and were really excited about it for a month, and then a year later they haven't touched it. But if you are active to some degree, my goal is that I tell beginners, especially with blogging, you can probably muster a 100-word blog post once a month. That's going to do wonders than leaving it alone and getting back to it maybe once a quarter. So 100 words you're going to see, you're going to use that up pretty quickly. 100 word article on your on your products and such once a month that's going to work really well so it doesn't hurt to be active it, it's much better to be active more often but if you haven't been at least some activity is good in the blogging class we right away we have an exercise in there about blogging brainstorming everyone can we in the class we can talk to people we can make up topics for everyone that takes the class usually. Um, the author of the blog gets lots of great ideas from that class because then the, the class itself gives opinions of what kinds of blogs they would love to be reading. I would recommend to take that class again. Look it up on the catalog. I'm not sure when it's coming up. But blogging is helpful for SEO. I want to get subscribers to my email newsletter. That's another good thing that could help my SEO because here I've basically, people have explicitly said it's okay to send me emails. It's okay to contact me directly. If they've chosen to subscribe to your newsletter, your blog updates via email, whatever, they've given you their email address for you to market to them directly, to send them an email once in a while. How many of you have heard of MailChimp? What about Constant Contact? Those two companies, MailChimp and Constant Contact, are companies that help you create email campaigns. People sign up for your newsletter, you set it up on MailChimp and they will and MailChimp will send for you nicely designed, powerful emails to these people that chose, have chosen to subscribe to you. And if you do it right, you can have this clientele of people in your email database that then, when you send out an email with a, with a coupon, can buy your product. So it's another way to reach an audience. You've probably subscribed to newsletters before email newsletters. I'm on a couple. One of them is the Fry's Electronics newsletter, and I love it and hate it because every time I get one of those I want to buy so many things from it, but I have to stay strong and wait for payday. So I like it, that newsletter, because it comes with, all, with my own unique coupon code where I get 10% off or whatever from the products. So there's that enticement from Fry's for me to subscribe. Why would I subscribe to another 
newsletter to clog up my inbox because I'm going to get exclusive coupons from Fry's. So simply, simply slapping on a subscribe now button on your homepage is not going to cut it. You're going to want to also tell them why are they going to subscribe. A little blurb right there. Subscribe for exclusive offers. Or get coupons by email. Subscribe. You want to think of some terminology, some words that will entice people to give you their email so you can market to them. And it's out of, us, out of the scope of this class, but then that's its own art and science of how many emails are too much. This can be really complex from the kinds that we've run before. There's these things called drip campaigns that the software like MailChimp or Constant Contact is very smart that it keeps track of. This person visited your website but has not visited it in three days. Send them this kind of email. And if they answer that email, then next week send them this other kind of email to keep them engaged, to get that ultimate conversion, make a sale. It's out of the scope of our class. Not everyone needs this newsletter, but it's just another way to reach an audience. Nowadays, our, the audiences are so fragmented. Remember when there were only three channels on TV? Now there's 300 on the basic package. Same thing online. Remember when there were, when there were only 1,000 websites? Now there's 100,000 million billion. I don't know. There's lots of websites. Lots of places for people to get distracted from or buy. So if we can reach them in as many ways as possible, the better. Obviously it's much more work for you. It may simply be an investment of time or it may be an investment of money, but you have to decide which of those is more. So we have channel about like the subscription service or something? It will create a subscription service for you, yes. Constant contact. Mm -hmm. um, again, you don't have to do all of these, but the more of these that you do, the better. The next one would be get virtual clients, which would be your followers on social media, to come to my physical location. I might have a store on Main Street. Um, and that's where I sell my products. Actually, I can't, I can't email a cupcake. Uh, if I put it in a, you know, if I put it in a shipping box, it might dry out by the time they get it. I sell my cupcakes at my store. Therefore, I might have a million followers on Twitter, but 75% of them are international, not even in the same city. 80% of them are not in San Diego. So I've got a million followers, but I can only sell locally. <clears throat> <laughs> the value then of all of those followers is diminished. My real core, important then, audience is those that are, that are local. So I'm trying to get those Twitter followers, those Instagram followers that are local in San Diego to come to my store here in San Diego. That might be one of the harder ones. I want to get someone you know, away from their computer into my store. Or I want to get someone who is always looking at their phone to then put it down a moment to walk into my store. Or to use it to, for that coupon. So taking some of those virtual followers and converting them into physical visitors so that then I can complete my ultimate goal, get the client to buy the cupcake. If that was my main goal and only goal all along, I'm going to be disappointed. The more of these other goals I engage in and become successful at, the better chance I get to that goal. You should see that it's a long, involved process to get from point A, a potential client follows you on Twitter, to point Z. <coughs> the follower visits the store and buys a product. That's why search engine optimization goes hand in hand with search engine marketing. Also an emerging term that takes both into account is content marketing. And I've got a link at Forbes that we'll look at right after the break. But I wanted to show you page two of this document because 
these are many little goals that you can go toward to accomplish your big goal. When we back up after the break to page one, we will then set up the webmaster tools to be able to track, are any of these things working? I'm spending a lot of time on Twitter, but is it working? I'm not getting sales yet, but that might not be your only goal. So that's why we have these analytics accounts, these free analytics tools that the search engines, Bing and Google, provide for us to see how we're, how we're doing. We'll take a break, we'll look at that link for a bit, I'll provide you with another interesting content marketing link, and then we'll back up and do what's on page one. Any general questions about these concepts on page two? All right, it's seven o'clock, I'll turn the printer back on. It's seven o'clock, let's come back at 7.10 and we'll proceed.